there is a flash flood emergency where you've got catastrophic, life-threatening flooding. My son was like, Mom, Dad, you gotta get out. He said, there's water coming up the back. I'm 88 years old. I waded in water above my knees, down the middle of the street. I went through a lot, and it wasn't easy. Long before Hurricane Harvey stormed into Texas, Bishop Doyle had been summoning us all to get out of our pews and to get out into the community, to meet neighbors. Who's in city government? What are the concerns of the community? And so it just so happened that when Hurricane Harvey hit, we really needed to know those things. We needed to know who we could call, who we could link our arms with to form that coalition of the willing so that we could serve not only our own people, but also the needs of the wider community, especially the most vulnerable among us. And I came back out here to try and get back into my house doing a little at a time, and the water was terrible. I couldn't bathe in it, I couldn't drink it, I couldn't cook with it. It was the mall, you know, that we cleaned the mall and it would start coming back and start coming back. And I have two kids that suffer from asthma. So the doctor told me you have to move of house, but I never have the money to move. Well, that's a lot of family, they, they, they depend on a greenhouse. You know, the hurricane hit, they got no income also except government check, you know, that's all they got. If it wasn't for the assistance from the diocese, um, to be honest, I probably would not be here. The heart of our disaster recovery program is our congregations. In partnership with the diocesan recovery team, we are leaders and volunteers in this mission field. Then he told me he had a surprise for me. I said, surprise? And he says, yes, we're finding you a home. And I start, ah! We seek to serve our under-resourced sisters and brothers when conventional disaster recovery methods do not work. I can't say how grateful I am to the Episcopal Diocese because we have so many funders that come to the table and say, we only want to fund this. It has freed up so many opportunities to provide resources for people that we just wouldn't have been able to. All of my life I've helped others, never knowing that one day I would need help, but not thinking that if I needed help, I would be turned away so many times. But I thank God for the people who provided this for me. I feel honored, I feel blessed. Every home, every person has a different need. And so with you guys being so flexible, we were able to meet most of every need that these people may have. Thanks to generous grants from Episcopal Relief and Development and our Diocesan Quinn Foundation, we are able to tailor our services to the special needs of families and thereby respecting the dignity of every human being. You know, I, I can't begin to you know, explain in words what it means to me to be back home. It was all of their desire for Miranda to be able to be back into the family home, to have Mark here to bless this home, just tops it off. In addition to storm repair work, new and deepening relationships between church members and storm survivors have become a means of transformation for people and for neighborhoods, both for the givers and receivers of care. We believe we are called to do service. And um, when the volunteers offer their time and they inspire other people, and then I met a lot of great people, people that, you know, that I, I kind of bonded with, you know, just my brothers and sisters. This uniquely Episcopal model of disaster recovery is preparing us for the next one. It's a wonderful experience. We know that, that uh, we are trying to be Jesus for people, and, um, and we think we're, we're doing an okay job of that. What are we offering to the community? that the world is not offering to them. One way that our program has helped is because the church is a safe place, people come and seek uh, guidance. When one client comes to counseling and learns all these new coping skills, we're essentially helping the family system because parents role model these new uh, coping skills to their children. There's something 
so uniquely bonding about working recovery with your neighbors for your neighbors. We have the same goals and our goal is to be a more resilient community, to recover our community, not just to be where we were before, but to be stronger than we were before. Jesus teaches us in the Gospels according to Luke and Matthew that we need to keep our lamps trimmed and burning because we do not know when He'll call us next. And when He does, we need to be prepared to say, Here I am. Send me.